Do you ever just get bored with photography and decide to try and do something crazy like take a photo in an insane location at a ridiculous time of day? iFootage, the sponsor of this video, recently sent me their new anglerfish lights, which are fantastic, and asked me to test them. Which is great, except for that it's the middle of summer here in Alaska, and that means there's very little darkness outside. This is where I got the totally ridiculous notion of going to take a photo of somebody at midnight from a mountaintop in Alaska to catch sunset and just after sunset and use that and the mountains behind them as the backdrop to the photo. Challenge number one, we're gonna be climbing a mountain, which means we're gonna be carrying everything on our back. So we wanna keep everything pretty small, lightweight, compact, and portable. Challenge number two, it's the middle of summer here in Alaska, which means the sun doesn't even set until 1130. And then if you're on top of a mountain, it means the sun doesn't even set until much later than that. This means finding a location that's fairly accessible and easy to get to that has a fantastic backdrop and a good sunset that we can climb safely close to midnight and then climb back down after the sun has set. Hatcher Pass, Alaska. I've climbed a few different mountains around here and they've all been spectacular, but most of them take a good deal of work to climb. But there is one called Skyscraper Mountain that we can get to. Next up, gear. I'm gonna use the a7 IV and my Sony 85 1.8 to take these photos because the 85 is a spectacular portrait lens and the Sony a7 IV takes great photos. For lighting, this is where the iFootage 60DN comes in perfect. It's small, compact, lightweight, and it can be battery powered. It only weighs about a pound and a half. It can be battery powered via V-mount or via two NPF style batteries. I'm gonna use the V-mount adapter because I've got some good V-mount batteries and they'll give me a lot of runtime off of just one battery. It has a really good color rendering index of 98 or a TLCI of 99, so incredibly accurate colors and it has plenty of power to be able to front light our subject as the sun starts to go down. For lighting modifiers, we're gonna take two, a 50 centimeter lantern and a 60 centimeter dome. Both are small, lightweight, collapsible, and very portable. I've got the location and the equipment set. Now I just need a subject. So I put it out on social media asking a few of my friends if they wanted to come with me. Does anybody wanna climb a mountain with me at midnight sometime next week? You can help carry gear. Fortunately, a good friend of mine said yes, and so a little before 10 p.m., a handful of us set off on a journey to climb this mountain before sunset. We made it to the top of the mountain with a little bit of time to spare, so we sat and waited, watching the sun slowly go down toward the horizon. With the sun starting to go down, it was time to take a few test shots to make sure I kind of had an idea of where I wanted the camera settings to be. For my ISO, I always like keeping that as low as possible, so I set it at 100. For portraits, I really like using f4 for my aperture because it gives a nice good amount of depth of field, but it doesn't uh, blow out the background too much. Then it was just playing with the shutter speed to get the amount of light set for what I wanted. Beyond it being a spectacular evening and a little windy, you can literally see the Alaska range, which is Denali, Hunter, and Four Acre, uh, about 100 miles north of us. And then we got this bank of clouds. It's gonna, sun's gonna sink behind the bank of clouds, so we'll lose it for a bit, but it looks like it might pop back out just before it goes down over the horizon, which means we should get some spectacular color in the sky for this photo shoot. I really, really wanna catch that like 
late, uh, just after sunset glow. And with the, the bank of clouds over there, it should be perfect. With the sun having dipped below the horizon, it was time to actually start taking the photos before all the color faded out of the sky. Hold that for me, would you? That's my 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 key light. Right, shine, shine here. There we go. See, key light. I brought a key light with me. Uh, look at how look at how beautiful and soft that light is. So we got some great photos. Very cool photos, I think. Anyway, as far as I know. Uh, so now we're gonna play around a little bit and do a little, just some other angles. Look toward that side where the sun isn't, or the glow is kind of more set into dusk, and use this as a kicker light, which comes from behind and from the side without the diffuser, probably, to give a really nice edge light and, and really highlight the, the side. I think we got the shots. The photos look pretty freaking awesome. Uh, so I can't wait to edit them and see what they look like, but you all are gonna see them right now. Uh, but yeah, super cool. Really glad these, all, these guys all came up and hung out with me and uh, even carried some of the gear. Also kind of froze our butts off. Sometimes we need a harebrained idea just to push ourselves and see what we're capable of. And while this time we came away with some incredible photos, to me, the best part of this was the experience of spending time with friends on a mountaintop in Alaska, watching the sun go down. I wanna thank iFootage for sponsoring this video and for making some really great products that enable adventures and shoots like this to even be possible. If you wanna see a full breakdown about the new lights that they're offering, the Angler Fish series, you can click or tap right there. I'll see you in that video. As always, if you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream, which happens Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.